Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're gonna paint some uh, hydrangea today. I get a lot of requests for painting hydrangeas and I went over to uh, uh, Adobe Stock over here and I got these two beautiful flowers and I kinda like them. The uh, actual photographer took the pictures of it and then created it in a Photoshop kinda thing and I love how they put it together. Sometimes you can go over and look at those things and get, you know, photographers are artists as well, how they compose a photo and get yourself some nice Nice ideas. I'm going to turn this into a vertical here. This is a, a 14 inch uh, by 18 inch uh, wood panel here. I like to paint. I gave it a coat of the Heritage uh, Canvas Prep Medium like I normally do. This makes a nice absorbable uh, surface that I love to paint uh, on. And uh, then I'm going to use my normal standard uh, what we call Dave's favorite uh, colors here on, on YouTube. I will list all these colors like I normally do down in the video description down below along with links for those of you that are interested in getting them. But uh, So I'm going to uh, start out here and I'm going to paint a couple of uh, of the balls of the hydrangeas. We used to grow a lot of them when we lived out in California and not so many out in Pennsylvania and they're hard to grow out here in Nebraska. But um, I'm going to paint a couple of balls here on, on a vertical kind of uh, a, a composition and I'm going to just use my reference photo and you can see up there, I have more. You only see two on camera there but you see four. Up there. I have more. Get yourself lots of, of reference photos, surround yourself, and let's have some fun, okay? So I also have some Derivan open medium out here. You see me use that before. I have the Heritage Extender medium in this little cap. This is normally what I, I like to start out paintings with because it's thinner, and then as I get on to the painting, I get a little thicker, and that's where we're going to start today. I'm going to take some of this uh, extender medium and a wide this is the fusion brushes I use the fusion brushes these are very soft brushes they work perfectly with these acrylics to give me some really soft edges when I want them I'm going to use the extender because it's really thin and I like how it's slippery and it's going to slow down the drying time to paint so I have lots of time to work this background I'm going to take some white and I want to create like when you look over here I want to create some of this kind of modeled background. So I'm basically, I'm going to start out a little toned. And when I do that, one color I like to use a lot is my uh, burnt sienna and green. I love those colors together. They make nice gray. Sometimes I'll use a touch of blue. And let's just get a touch here. I don't want to get this too light yet. Some blue and some red. And you just make yourself a nice greenish kind of gray here that I think would be very pretty in the in the composition. We'll add some more extender here quite a bit. As a matter of fact, let's just thin this out. Because I'm going to go over the whole surface here with this here first. Just a nice thing. But I, I want to do this. I want to X. And so I'll get some different colors. Sometimes I'll just reach up. Sometimes you'll see me do this. Reach up and grab some other colors here and, you know, push those in. I like that. And, uh, you know, sometimes even just a little water, if I feel I'm getting my extender too thick, you can use water. Water and extendable extender are mincible, which means they, 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 glow, they go together very well. And so what the water, though, does is add a faster drying component of it here. And uh, I don't need this to stay wet for too long because I'm going to use a different technique. So you can see I get some of these colors in, and I'm looking for some of that blurry look to it. Maybe, maybe we grab a little yellow, and we'll push a little bit of yellow. Some of this can be added later on. I do like to have... Um, like streaks and stuff like that going on. I build, tend, when I paint a background or something like this, I tend to build the painting at the same, the background at the same time I do the painting. Uh, and that's not the way I used to do it, I started out with, but as I became a better, more proficient artist, that's what I did. So you can see here, see this right here? When I take that strike, I get that light color. That shows the color is very thin on the surface. And that's kind of where I want to leave it right now thin because I'm going to paint my background at the same time I paint my object. So I got some nice colors in there. Now, 
we can, one of the things I like to do, especially if I, if you know, if you're going to do some of these real light ones uh, down there or what you see through here, uh, even this lighter one here, uh, to come back through and touch in with a paper towel like this. And this could be used to help you start the composition, but leave some of this background area showing through. But I like... This is a technique, when I went and studied a lot of what Rembrandt did, this is what he did with a lot of his uh, portraits and stuff, is that he would work, he would, uh, you know, take, put on glazes, heavy, heavy glazes, and wipe down, not with paper towels, but with uh, cloth, soft cloths and stuff, until he got some looks and stuff that he really, really liked. I like some of this smaller little uh you know more open stuff that you see over there smaller little open stuff that you see i like little touches and see you can even like if we just wanted to suggest something into the back back here you can just take your paper towel and just suggest like this like that might be the edge of a of one sitting right back there like that see we might not even do something like that you might and you might not but removing glazes and color especially like if you remember you put it on really heavy and then you start rem uh, removing it and you get more values and stuff through it those uh, those are great great techniques and something that uh, I think artists today should use a lot more of because it's it really does create a really pretty effect pretty quickly now Let's decide. I think I want my, maybe something like this lighter one here, maybe some blues and stuff down through there, blue violets and stuff that you see, and some of those reddish ones up there. But let's come in here. Let's grab ourselves right into our background so it softens out a bit. We don't want to get too bright. A little red and some of these colors. Now, if they get too bright, what's the complement of some of these reds? Is going to be our greens and stuff, right? So we can just take some of that. We can soften this out. You can see how I put a little green in there, how it just softens it out. But don't, don't overmix it too much. This is what I call modeling. See that on the palette? I don't overmix it too much. Now we just want to do a few strikes of this in here. And see, I'm just using, this is a, a one inch brush and I just use the corner and I just lightly hit across because I don't want to depart, I don't want to impart tremendous amounts of this color. I'll push some of this, maybe this will be the red one back up here, okay? But we, we wanna, you know, one thing that I like about some of, the, uh, of these as opposed to painting the real ball that you get on a real mature uh, uh, hydrangea is, you know, we have these air spaces that you see in between. And I kinda like that, so I wanna make sure I preserve some of that. So let's take some of that and we'll push in a little bit heavier color so I'll pick up a little bit more a little bit more color and this is what what you've got to imagine is you're painting the a light and shadow side of the of the hydrangea here the light and shadow side of it so we uh, will just keep it real a light side and a shadow side so i you know when i break this up when i'm looking at it i see the light side and i see the shadow side and i'm not going to copy it completely i don't want to do that but uh i just want to capture the feeling of light and shadow let's push a little bit maybe a little softer so i'll go over towards my background here and we'll push just a little softer color down into some of these other marks. And so you see that color carrying here through the composition here. Let's um, come over and uh, let's get, let's read some of the other colors here. It's kind of a, almost a, a, a coral or a fleshy tone here, which is some of your reds and your violets there and yellow. We add a bit of yellow to that and that's what's gonna give us that kind of corally kind of color here. Let's push some of that in. That's a pretty color going to there. Little, a little bit dark maybe, but it's okay. And let's push a, a bit of that into here. Right back up into here. 
some of it. Now let's leave some of this more open. I love the flowers when they get more wild and open as well. And some touches of it down through here, just light touches. We want these to be what I call the ghost, the ghost flowers back here. And you can always take your paper towel and take it back off. See, I can come here with my paper towel once I get that and even give the feeling of petals here like this to something like that. So you can even, like see, just for example here, I'll put it back on here, but see, I can take my paper towel after I glaze something right here and actually physically come in here like this and start to make the, the shapes of petals. If you want to really, really see it, and this is starting to dry up just a bit. So if you want to really see it, you got to think to your solvent. And you're working acrylics here, so what is your solvent? Water. So just take a tiny, and the key word there is tiny, bit of water onto your paper towel, and you'll cut right through it immediately. Do you see that? So I can come back in here and start to set. You can get some really, really pretty effects here with the hydrangea, just, I mean, or with any kind of technique, really by just using that glazing and water and light and, and stuff. And you can start building some of the effects of them. And then how much detail and stuff is up to you. I'm gonna go quite thicker. I'm gonna use some thicker paint and do some more of that art stuff all over the place. But that's how you can start it out. Now, we were thinking about maybe getting some of these cooler colors in. So let's get those down here. Let's get these, these cooler violets that we're gonna see down here. And We'll get that right over here. We'll lighten that up. We'll get some of these really pretty and softer. So what's the, what's the complement to somebody that's actually gonna head right out over here? As I head over here, that's gonna soften really pretty. See these soft colors, soft violets. And as it goes here, it's mixing up that coral, which is really yellow, which is the complement to the violets. And this is why I love to paint with a dirty palette because my colors cross over each other so well. I like this just, I, I like that color that's picking it up right in there. Could have just a touch more blue into it. Let's lighten that blue up so we don't change that too much. I like that lighter, a little bit more blue into it. It's a little cooler, a little cooler feeling. That's pretty. So we'll push some of that color right in there. Let's push a, a bit of that happening out here into our background maybe. You know, some of this happening right back. See, I'll just, and that background stays wet because of that extender there. So I can work some of these colors in here that I want here that I see I like that. If, even if, so if I'm gonna have one hydrangea down here, I'll carry that color throughout the composition there. And this is where I will go, I add a little more extender. If you add a lot of paint, you need to add extender. This is where I will add some more paint right back up here. Let's get a little bit lighter yet, maybe a bit more blue here. And let's get some lighter areas of paint right in here, carrying that in. And see, we can soften that right in. Right now we're just carrying this whole soft, we're, care, we're creating this kind of dreamy look to the flowers here. That's what I'm interested in carrying. Maybe, maybe we do this here, which is kind of nice to do sometimes. Carry some of the light through, so you carry it right through the painting. Whether that stays there or not, I don't know. We might, we might change it, but you can get a good idea for it. Now, so that's with my big brush. Now I'm gonna to go to a number 10 filbert. Now you can use a flat or you can use a filbert. Um, I tend to, whenever my petals on the flowers tend to teardrop around slightly like that, I tend to like to paint them with a filbert because that filbert has that built in. But you can do this with a flat as well. You see me do it all the time. Let's come back up here towards the top. Let's take some of our reds, our whites, here a little bit of our greens just a bit to soften that down gray that down okay let's come in and let's just see yeah we, and so I want to softly create or start to create some of the ideas of these petals now sometimes I might want to leave a little bit of negative or we call open space negative space within the flower there 
And uh, let's darken that just a bit so it's a little easier to see. Keep it gray. Don't get it too bright. We're gonna we're painting these because we're painting these this way because we like the we're gonna paint this more dreamy, softer application here of the flowers. So we'll here I'll just push up like the idea or the shape of a petal, you know, of a little flower. I don't have to I don't have to paint that each flower I can just give the impression of part of it here that you will see in the hydrangea here change your tone a little bit let's add a little more of the quinacridone violet here so we'll change our tone up especially as we come down here towards the shadow side here maybe get a little heavier here a little bit more of a touch maybe a bit of that violet happening into this right out here. So the edge of this one starts to change a bit here. Okay. And then just a few, just a few of these little touches, little tips, little touches of it, just to get the color out here because we don't want to destroy the light dark of it. Okay. So, but I do like, kind of like that little bit of dark that's right there because of the way the petals chain turned it is showing up a little darker so let's just give something like that I do like sometimes that happening right here on onto the light side a little change that gives a a little more volume when you paint that light dark like that it gives a little more volume itself to the hydrangea here okay let's lighten up Let's just step right up here. Nice light little pinks here. And let's start some lighter strokes. And here I'll be careful, slow, and I'll do, actually do a little more drawing. I'm actually looking at the petal size. So this number 10 is perfect for this. And I'm actually gonna create the little petal, imagining where the center of that little blossom is on this particular one. And we'll paint the petal here. Let's drop one. We don't have to paint all of them. Just drop the edge in here, the angle in. We just have to give a suggestion. And I usually like to paint two or three in each area, you know, of the painting, or, you know, of this little uh, ball here of the hydrangea. I don't have to paint all of them. I just like to paint a few of them. And let's darken down. As you go over here to the side, just darken down a bit. Just add a few little marks. You don't have to paint. Once you have, you know, it all depends on you as the impressionist. Because I am I like to paint the impression of it. I don't like to copy, copy too much. I'm not going to go in there and copy. I want to catch the feeling of it. And it doesn't, once you have two or three of these little guys done up here, you don't have to have a lot of them everywhere. Because the viewer is going to see it as a ball of the, or, of the flowers, of the hydrangea. Now, I'm going to take a little more white. See, I'm going to push this right against the edge. And I'm going to lighten up just a little bit more. And, of course, this is where I will uh, kind of pick out some center of interest ones. I try to change my technique just a bit here and there. So I'm not always stroking exactly the same. So it makes each one a little different. Let's put a little mark, like a little turned one there. A little mark, I like that. I lost that red one that I put in there. So we can push that back in though. But uh, little bits there like that, okay. Now sometimes I'll come back with that dark right from that center and lift out to create that darker center that you see in some of them, you know, that, that come through there. So, and I don't have to, again, I don't have to paint every single one. I just have to paint a few and catch the, the feeling of it. Now, see, I like some of that light green. I might just go ahead and touch some of this real light, a real light kind of yellow green right in there, like I see in some of the... Uh, the ball there and what this is going to do is take this the, some of this background color and push it right into the flower to lighten it up and open it up a little bit so we don't so we get the feeling of it being more airy we get the feeling of it we can see the background there through it 
And before I go too far, I usually like to take I, I like to take burnt sienna and uh, a little bit of the pine green. And I love to use this to draw through here as little stems, back leaves. Now that's a little stiff. My raw sienna, I mean my burnt sienna is a little stiff there. And uh, I pulled it out of a big jar today and I didn't have the lid on completely. So it's a little stiff, but that's okay. We can correct that. Let's just push and we might want to See how I just love to, to draw it and, and put in the composition as I'm designing it here. And I catch a feeling for it. Now, we'll just leave some of that as maybe just the idea, because this is our back one, right? And we'll leave this as ideas of stuff here, leaves and stuff that are coming through. I like this little leaf coming out there like that, so. Maybe we'll emulate that just a bit here. We'll just emulate that coming through here. And nothing perfect yet. We just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that a bit more. But I want to keep it soft like that, see? Now, back up underneath there on that backside, though, we could have another little stroke of dark or so. Imagine where that vein line is, the center vein line of that of this larger leaf and just kind of pull your pull your marks down towards that center vein line and on that particular one it gets a little lighter maybe a little yellower here and lighter towards that center vein line so we can just sneak in a little bit of that right there and just give up a, a, a little look to it you know I'm not going to get too wound up into it but that's a a little bit there and we can finish off that hydrangea look. I'll take a little green and a little dark here, a little dark of my uh, red violet, and just add, you can add the lighter touches to the centers here. We can add darker touches to it here. That's one way. Um, I do like some of this other color here. That's your quinacridone and the red. And let's come right in here. And more quinacridone, maybe a touch of that red violet just makes it a little darker. We'll see if this is going to be, well, what's going to be too bright? Let's add just a touch of green. So whenever I want to dusty rose this, take this, see how it grays it down just a bit? That's your decision, how bright you want to make. Some of you, some of you really like to paint quite a bit brighter. So you can go ahead and put in more quinacridone. But I tend to, what I like to do is put in the larger bit more toned and then I'll come in with smaller little touches of it brighter here and there where I want some of that brightness after I put in the larger amount of toned color. That is um, a lot of those of you that study color and I have an entire online course of color. I've been teaching color now for 40 years. I absolutely love it. Almost 40 years. Um, it is uh, what is this is called uh, um, is called the law of disproportionate color as the area of a, as a color gets brighter the area in which you it occupies gets less that's what happens in nature and that's what we do here and to make sure that we as an artist conform to what we're used to seeing in nature doesn't mean you have to but it is it does give you pathways to help you create by using the laws of nature. Okay, so that one looks not too bad. It's not exactly the same in there, but I've captured the light dark feeling. I've got some of that lighter green happening through there. Some of that green could come out through here into a streak so that, uh, you know, the viewer picks that up. They see that here. I like that here. So. We'll push that through maybe a bit right out here. Just blur that in a bit. See, just blur. I love the blur. Sometimes I'll take my big brush, you know, especially when I did a background with, and just blur over something, especially there towards the back. That really gives those lost edges. Let's come back in. Some of our nice corals. So we'll take some of our greens and yellow, or our, our yellows really, and add right into here. Lighten this up right into here. Let's get some more of those coral colors 
right out here. Ooh, a little bit of that, you know, that green looks really pretty in there too. Just loosens that up and, you know, gives some of that background. Now you can cut through if you want, you know, to create some of that lighter bit of it there. Um, let's give it a spot or two of more yellow just because we like that. A little bit more yellow. That yellow to those violets. Some of those, there's a real pretty, pretty kind of a gray color there, which is really green. And some of your reds and yellows here. That kind of a, a little bit more red will make it a little more brown color. Do you see that? Okay. That all comes to you in color theory. So I'll get that little bit more brownish tone to it right in there. Which, will, which is a beautiful tone if you're going to, and see how I just touch and push and I'm trying to use my brush in all different kinds of ways. So each, so I'm not doing a tap, 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 repetitive mark. You want to stay away from repetitive marks. Okay. While we have that tone there, let's take a little bit of violet with that, a little more violet. And it takes very little blue and quite a bit of the to make these violets and use this to gray down that violet so we can come in here kind of soft maybe a little bit lighter and so you can you know some of you are starting maybe I hopefully some of your ideas are starting to to take off here with some of the colors and some of the things you can do with a beautiful you know bouquet of these these would look quite pretty some of the different softer colors here. Right down through there like that. See, and just, that's the impressionism that I like. I just leave those marks. As I get painting, sometimes I get a little wild and crazy and I just do it. Sometimes I go, whoops, and I take the background, take it off. But this sometimes it happens. It's real pretty. Um, if I want to thin something, I use the extender. So I'm going to thin this out because I'm just going to carry a little bit of that color right up here into the backs back here. Into the backs. So that color makes sure that it travels into the composition. So you can have white hydrangeas that carry yellows and greens and reds and, you know, red hydrangeas that carry the greens and some of the violets and stuff. All different kinds of colors can happen in there. Let's get this lighter coral with the white over here now okay and let's come in and let's look to a couple of maybe more specific ones right up here into the front that is going to shape the main part of the hydrangea right there and let's get that a little lighter i'm just going to pull a little bit of pure white in here and just hit like not the whole petal i just put on just like the edges of it just a smaller little mark and sometimes i'll come back Maybe a little violet, a little red. Touch that right into the center and lift off. Remember, you're only having to paint. Think of this as having to paint a couple of daisies into a composition. You're thinking of just small little fun flowers. Not all of them, you know, just a fun little flowers here. And then we're going to, from that point, we're going to start to carry color. So we only really have to paint a few of these little guys here. Let's put this in maybe a little flatter, right like that. And just push. See, it just gives a nice little look to that front. Let's put some more. But now, as I come back here, maybe I'll turn and not use the brush exactly the same. And I'll put on little globs of paint, especially, you know, textures right up here in the front. Because this is the 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 center of interest hydrangea here okay let's get a bit you know right up especially where you want to have some contrast maybe right up here sitting above that that uh, nice uh, stem that's gonna push the stem back and lift the other parts of the hydrangea here forward maybe just some touches here some and then as I come down this side I'll reach over maybe grab some of this violet and stuff so we'll start to let the uh, colors soften out here some of these violets some of these other tones here 
See? See how my tone is changing? And this is the prettiest part. Let it model up, dirty up here, and let those dirty colors sit over something. In other words, don't just put red over where we put red there before. Use a different color, and that'll make a prettier hydrangea for you when you're kind of almost layering these colors. Let's push back maybe a little bit of this light here so some of this falls down a little lower here like that. That are hydrangeas, but I don't want to, you know, I like, I love that out there, that kind of, you know, wispiness of it. It's not a perfect round ball that you see a lot of artists paint the hydrangea in. And the way I painted them for the longest time, I don't see that. Now, see, I'm just angling in a few little petals here and just hitting little marks. And I, I want to, that's really nice up there in the front, but I want to get a little more light and a little more power. So a little more texture right up here with that one. Here we go. Right up there in the front. And you can see how it just really, when I get that edge of that and that texture, how that just kind of dominates the painting there. We'll just blur that out a bit there. Little sparks. I love the, and you can see like this, like little sparks of color. So I tend to come through and just do this. And Richard Smith did this all the time. And I, I just love his light and airy, his... He had a, a way of painting a la prima, and that's what I'm doing here is painting a la prima. And Richard Smith, if you haven't ever looked him up, look him up. But he created a, a style, an elegant style of a la prima called, the, and he coined this own frame, the Grand Manor. And someday I am hoping to head towards that just a little bit more. It, it is so casual, but yet so thoughtful in its presentation it is amazing and uh i'm gonna get there someday with that but uh so we'll but you know and here i tend to i tend to try to paint and and capture something pretty quickly usually what we're at 30 minutes okay so i'm capturing a pretty good look if you go paint the Grand Manor, it's going to be more thoughtful and slower progression it'd be fun to do that if you want to see that Comment down below, and we'll sit down and we'll attack a Grand Manor painting sometime. That would be fun to do together here on the channel and get everyone's thoughts on it. You know, let's take some of this nice light kind of violet color here and push some of that just into a few. See, we don't need many, and I'm just going to let this, maybe even let some of this real light, even some of this corally light kind of trickle down here as some of this fades away here, right down to there. See, I don't need to do a whole lot because, you know, I've, I've, I'm capturing a look, you know, I, I'm capturing a, a look to them that I, I kind of like. Now, let's go back, grab some of this coral, some of this, this color, and I'll add, as I want the paint to be thicker, you can see I'm now adding open medium. This is going to make the paint a little transparent, but it's, not not bad, but it's going to uh, give me lots of open time in working the the color, and I don't and I don't need that much time. But I just want to and I just want to uh, create some of this blur here, but create more color movement more than anything else. So I want to create a little bit of that. See, I don't need to. See, back here with this, see, and what I'm doing is just, this has my background colors. I'm pushing it into, and it's sending it back. It's making what we call the ghost here. So I don't need to have a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, details in any of that, because you already see that I'm painting hydrangea. I'm going to work a little more pink. So see, I can come back in here and work some of these pinks in here right back into some of these just smaller little marks and I can work some of those beautiful pinks right back into here into some of these colors I don't want to drag it everywhere because I'll start to flatten it out but I can drag that through there somewhere and I do like like this kind of look where there's a bit of that shadow so how do we do that we'll we'll reach back and 
grab what we call our negative painting technique. I'm going to take some green. Let's take some red violet and uh, green. This is a cooler. This is the red violet and the, and the quinacridone violet will cool it. And the green, but I want it slightly to the green side. This is going to be high contrast, so we may need to soften this out. But I'll paint back through here now. Right back. In. And I don't need a tremendous amount. I just need to establish the feeling of shadows here into the painting. So I don't need it everywhere. I want to immediately start to soften that out. But I can use this. This is called negative painting. And if you like the look of it, I love it. But if you like the look of it, you go up to the top of the channel. Make sure you're on my channel. And then in the search bar up there, type in negative painting. And then you'll see videos that I have specifically gone in there to teach you negative painting and the rules of negative painting and how and why I do it and where I do it. Um, and that will help you quite a bit here. Let's just soften that out a bit here. But I love the look and the contrast that negative painting gives it. Change the color a bit. Let's add a bit more green right in here and maybe just a touch of that in through here. See, that's creating some additional contrast right in my center hydrangea there that I may want. Now, I may pull some of this out here a bit more right out through here, maybe a touch, maybe a, a softer little bit of it because I can just use my brush softly and express a little bit of it back down in there as well, okay? I'm gonna thin this out quite a bit. Let's green it up, thin it out. Use some extender, thin this out. So it doesn't have as much power. So as I pull it back down here, if you love the a la prima that I do and stuff, then you'll see why I do that. We'll pull that out down there a bit and catch that idea of that so it doesn't have to be this perfect ball but i do like like this flower here i could well let's this is so fun <laughs> it's just to create like this you know it's just so much fun let's create a bit more contrast right in here because i want that contrast right in here so we'll create with that a bit more contrast we'll just wipe our brush We'll pick up, let's go towards our pinks and our whites. Maybe a touch of that yellow so it goes more light coral that we had there. Let's pick up a bit more white here. And let's develop these petals on this side just a touch more. Right up against that shadow that I just applied. That'll give just a little bit more volume. See how it's giving just a touch more volume to this side of the hydrangea here. And really helps set this as the center of interest one here with that contrast and everything going on there. So a little bit more white, maybe a, that light petal right there, one right there, that light hitting against that dark right there. You know, that helps you really set that, that nice center there. We could take some of this light just softer out over here and build the idea. See, you don't need to paint the flowers. Just build the idea of those petals there. And that will help. And you can see the more you do, the more edges you do back out here, the more you bring it forward here, the more you bring it towards you. And I'll put a few edges like right out there. I love those, those little drippy spots where I, I just tap my brush. Let my brush just kind of tap and play around those. And I like that kind of look. Let's uh, lighten that up right up over here on this side too. A little drippy light, something happening back up over here. Maybe uh, just the idea of some back ones back here. See, that's kind of nice. You know, you can take some of these pinks. If you feel that's too pointed, and it might be, I do like like this little light edge one right there this is where sometimes if something's bothering you 
If something's bothering you, you go, oh, I'm not real sure. Look to your reference photos. That's why I use them. I don't copy them, but I'll look to my reference photos for ideas. And I do like this lighter one setting out just a little bit farther over here, which takes that shape, takes it off shape just a bit. Maybe a touch of the darker color in there. Just right in there like that. See, that's kind of... That's kind of pretty. Maybe a uh, touch lighter edge there. Right there. Leans it, brings that up towards that center of interest. One there. See a little bit of the stem line going through there still. Let's drop in. We'll take, I love those stems coming from this. This is a little thick. <laughs> it's a little, I should have added a touch of water to that. A little thick today. But that's okay. We're professionals. We can use that. I just left that lid. Off. It was cracked quite a bit, and I hadn't painted in about three days. So it dried out just a touch. So I figured, ah, oh, yeah, it's all right. But anyway, let's, uh, yeah, let's get a idea of some of these stems up through here and I'd love to just kind of pull those through and take some of that off like that okay and uh, maybe a little more yellow green over here a little bit more yellow some of this color right here but more yellow maybe a touch lighter softer right up over here this is the the real wispy part of it that i just like to do and i like marks i like marks of color like that you know so if you look at my brush i got burnt siennas and greens and yellows and i like to just drag that through and put in marks of color through the painting because i think that just adds so much to it let's um Take more of a yellow green. I kind of like a few of those leaves coming out. Let's just drop a more pointed leaf here coming out this direction. Maybe it's pointing in like this. Okay, and it's coming right back in like that. And I'm going to leave this, believe it or not, very underpainted like that. I don't want to. I don't want to do too much to it. As a matter of fact, I may have done too much to it. I, I want to leave it very much underpainted. Let's get it a touch lighter, yellow green here. Maybe a, a bit of that lightness coming out. Touch more green and yellow here. Just a ideas of and see I'll, I'll you know I don't always like to make perfect uh, strict leaves I like the as Helen Van Wick always says I say to like the leaves to be playful within the composition because I think many times even though you need those leaves and those leaf shapes they can distract from a painting so here I'm taking just a little light color just on the edge and I'll paint out what I don't need. So I'll give it a little bit of a light edge. Let's give it just a bit of a shadow pulling down that edge there, here like that. And so we can create kind of a turned leaf there. Let's put just a, maybe a bit of that light right up on the edge here. Now see, you see that's too much. So then I take and I'll put, push and paint back up into it taking out and I can pull back, push into it and I'm removing. So a lot of times when I paint, I usually paint too much what I want. And I go back in and I remove what I don't need. Let's just take a little edge here, and give an idea of a vein line there. I like to give the idea of a vein line because one of the things it does is it gives a directional line here to the to the leaf uh, kind of like pulls you down or does something like that I do like that kind of look here's a soft let's just push in some color here and uh, 
We'll thin it out as I go further down. I'll thin some of this out here and just pull. Let's, if I think something is too, like that's over there, you know, maybe it's a little too dark. So I just paint over it with a little light and then just smush it and it'll soften it out. Just tap it and it'll soften it out. But that gives kind of a nice, now, you know, here, so I have this, oh, I got to put the, before I forget, let me come back in there and push some light, or excuse me, some darker, kind of green. They're kind of green into that one. Some centers, just the idea of those centers here. A few of them around. We can touch a little lighter yellow here and there with them as well. That'd be pretty. Sometimes you just, even if you don't see it, you add it. It's a nice two-tone. Add a little two-tone, especially if it's it's here towards your uh, center of interest. Add that second tone because that just adds. Let's go even more to a little light, a little white. That just adds more interest right up there, see? So you're just, you're the artist. You're creating it. You're creating the interest here for your little bouquet of flowers here what you like let's see what that is doing here for that see that is going to be quite pretty I think in here with a, a nice frame like that that'll be pretty now the question is dun 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 how much more contrast do you want do you want to come in there and put in more do you like it like that really light or do you want to increase the light dark contrast like we have out here so Let's just take some extender, maybe a little bit of these violets and some of this. We'll create a real soft kind of a shadowy color. I love burnt sienna here, the greens, some of the violets here. Let's create a little more dark right out through here and see if we want to create a little more light shadow of our composition. So we have more of a, a light side and a shadow side of the composition here just by slowly darkening back that background. That's up to you. Now you can go all the way down in there. That's completely up to you. In fact, let's, let's expand that just a touch. A little blue, a little burnt sienna here. Blue and burnt sienna and green, those are really pretty, super dark colors. Let's add a little extender because I don't want to, I want to be able to take some of this back off here and see how dark that looks. But look what it does to the contrast here, especially right down in here of this painting. And do you like that particular contrast? Maybe get a, a little more of a violet right in there. So you see that violet color right there, see? Take that into your flower a little. See, just using the tip of this filbert. One of the reasons why I love, when I'm painting something like this, I love to use that filbert here. Just a little more color there. Maybe a little bit thinner. Drag this down a little bit. You know me, I like that. See, if I wipe out some of that leaf, I don't worry about it. I just go put it back. Or if I wipe out too much of my flower here, I just go put it back. You know, I, I but I like this, touching in and giving those, those edges there that you just quite don't know what it is. <laughs> that makes painting easier when they don't know what it is. You, well, you know, Monet said that, right? You've heard me say that in classes with you a hundred times that, you know, you, you always say leave 25% of it unpainted so that the viewer, because if you paint too much, you rob the viewer of their imagination. And it's really, really true. You do. And so you don't want to do that. Let's get some more of those pretty violets. And if this is too bright, we can even go over here and grab this gray that we had here. Just really pretty soft violets here and use those to help bring back a bit of this color right down maybe even draw on it right down here this beautiful little wispy hydrangea sitting right down there like that let's take 
just a touch of that color, maybe even negative painted up over here into this one. Here, here we go. It'll push back that one. It would be nice to see a bit of that color back up over here, see? Carrying your color, it's one of the things that it's the prettiest about, or I, I think it's one of the best things that artists, a really good artist, concentrates on more than anything else is carrying the beautiful colors. Let's just put a few little lighter colors here. Maybe just is a light little hydrangea coming up there. Light little edge, light little spark. This will shove that other one further back because I'm painting more of an edge. Where do you learn to do that? Landscapes. Landscapes teach you all these different, this is why you know, I'm using some landscape techniques now that I teach you all the time. One of the reasons why I love to paint westerns because westerns refine my eye to to see some of these marks and how they how they change and affect something. So that's kind of pretty. I don't know if I'm going to maybe a bit of that violet right up over here, maybe a touch more right down here. Some of that into, I'm not going to give centers in there. Not going to do that, I think. I'll just let that just kind of fade away. Might bring up a little more light violet. Lighter color right up in here. Let's go a little bit lighter. Just, just to say we have a good light source here onto this one. And then just let that... Just kind of fade away there. So that's kind of nice, just not quite, <laughs> you know, we, we carried all of those colors there. Now you could refine it even more, okay? I could come in here, like if I look at some of those colors, you could refine that even more. And what you do, if you want to refine it even more, all depends on where you are. Like take this light pink, come back in through here and fill up a little bit smaller little marks of some of that light pink into some of those places. Maybe a little bit of that touch of that brighter little violet. You know, you see a few little touches, just a few little marks of that in there. Let's, uh, that's a bit bright, so we'll put a little pink with that. And let's just touch a few little places right in here. And that's just gonna add more spark to, uh, this little hydrangea there as well. See, more spark and it's carrying that one down. Maybe soften this out, thin it out so it's just a light little touch and just add just a little whisper here and there to a few of these other little areas and it carries that color through the composition. So you can go back and you can work those colors. You can work that. You can start going to a, if you really want to get in there, get to a smaller brush. Go down to a six. Go down to a four. Start refining and adding, you know, more little details and stuff like that. You know, you can be more careful with your little centers and stuff that you have here. Make sure you refine those in. And that will give you you know, as much detail as you, you know, as you want to have in yours. You know, here, careful of these little centers because they can really pull something forward. So you really want to kind of blur them every once in a while. Maybe we'll put a touch of one in here. Just an idea there. Something like that. But that's all. And so everything else stays really kind of soft. They're really kind of fun to paint, uh, easy to paint. You know, start with the real, real soft negative, uh, or we're going to say is push in that real soft color. Now, I get all this to there. Do I want to push in any more color? That becomes something. So, you know, I've got this kind of nice blurry look back through there. I could intensify or bring up some of that background more. I could shape up more. I could come back. Let me just show you that and, and whether or not you do it is up to you. Okay, um, let me just, so if I have, I leave a blurry area there, like I got this nice beautiful violet here, I can come back up over here and just using light color extender or even some open medium, something to, to thin it out a bit here, I can give just the idea here 
of some back and that's going to fill up your composition a little bit but it's also going to create the negative feeling back there that there's another hydrangea way back before you blur it you can as you develop the petals of a flower more see what happens it starts to come forward a bit more so you determine that you know how full you you know some people like it all i like a little bit of negative space this is called negative space without the main design element but some people like to really fill it up and there's nothing wrong with that that's your call okay all right so there you got it um if you like it you want to see some more we have i have all kinds of um still life drawings and stuff that have uh, hydrangeas in it in pots and then also adding hydrangeas with daisies and some of the other things uh, just leave some of the comments down below and tell me that's what you want to see and i'll do some more of that kind of stuff and you can see it doesn't take very much paint Matter of fact, I have a Western all lined up there to start a Western. So maybe I'll start that this afternoon and use these colors, okay? But uh, it's really kind of funny going from a floral right to a Western. But it's the, you know, guys, it is edges. You'll find, you'll find great teachers out there. And there's all kinds of them on YouTube and stuff. But you'll find great teachers. And one of the, you'll know they're a great teacher when they start talking to you about edges, because in all of art, in, in all the things that I've learned over all the years of painting and traveling and teaching around the world, in 29 different countries I taught, and, and universities everywhere, the one thing that I learned more than anything else is edges. For example, here. Now, see, that's what we call a found edge. That's why it's coming forward. That's what we call back there a lost edge. See the difference? It's not only color. But it's the, the sharpness of an edge. It's the sharpness that, of an edge to the softness and blurriness of an edge. And see, if I come over here and I start to blur a little bit, blur this edge, so I'll take some of that stroke off and blur that edge, it recedes even more. And this, light, this little edge, this harsh edge comes forward, that blurry edge goes back. It's all about edges. And so every time you touch your brush, to the surface it's about edges and when i talk to you about calligraphy brush calligraphy and stuff it's usually the way in which an artist uses their brush on the surface to create edges and different shapes and forms and all artists will do it uh, you know very differently um you know it, it is like uh, i went over to the netherlands to study franz hall's 17th century contemporary painter of rembrandt and they were considered like one and two always. And Franz Halls, I heard it described that he struck the canvas with rapier-like marks and strokes and put in powerful edges into his painting. And he did and went over and was able to study them up really close. And it's all about edges. That edges is what paints these hydrangeas. The found edge to the lost edge to the soft edge. And so make sure your marks change. Don't... See... One last thing, and then I'll let you go. I do love teaching to you guys, okay? Watch what happens here. See, I've got this nice receding. But if I come, and even if I darken this down, okay? And so if I come up here and I put on this edge, see? I've advanced it. It's coming, it's, I'm losing its roundness. So I want to blur it out and see what happens. That pushes it back. So one of the things when you paint these hydrangeas and all these little flowers, you've got to make sure some of them lose their edges and some of them bring their edges forward. It's all about edges. Okay. All right. So if you want to see more, drop that down there for some of you others. I'll see you day after tomorrow on the Western that's coming. Okay. And uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Don't those of you that are in the memberships, I'll put these reference photos I have here into the memberships, go over to community page, click that. You'll get those. If you have any kinds of comments or something like that, add that on, you know, this, this comment, I'm trying to catch up after all the things our family has gone through in the last couple months. I'm trying to catch up on all my comments and I thank you all for your prayers and everything. And so, um, I'm trying to catch up on all of that, and I'm using you guys to get happy again. So thank you very much. Thank you for hanging with us, and uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Thanks very much. Let's go paint a Western next, okay? All right. I'll see you guys over there.